Hello, hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Today is April 5th. I am so excited to be back. Last week I was off. Um, so go ahead and grab something cozy. Hopefully you have a nice blanket nearby, um, maybe a beverage of choice, and I will see you back here in 30 seconds. All right. Well, we are back. I am so pumped. I missed y'all last week. Um, last week I uh, was off for the week. I was with my family because my, my own kids were, were on their spring break. So we were able to kind of unplug for the entire week. And I feel like I really was super intentional about like remaining unplugged. And that has always, always been such a big challenge for me. Um, so I was like, I'm really needing to commit to this. Like, that's something that I often talk about with other teachers and leaders. Um, and I think that is really hard for us because our jobs and our roles are so important, but our role in our families, in whatever capacity that is, um, that is always most important, right? So um, it was wonderful to just unplug and be with them and really focus my time and energy. So... But I am back and I'm very glad to be back with y'all. This weather, y'all. So I was in Florida. So I, I have to say, like, nothing beats the sunshine, <laughs> especially after like months and months of coldness and gray skies. I did have a lot of good sunshine. So very thankful for that. But this weather, it shouldn't surprise me. It shouldn't surprise any of us. But. <laughs> Um, it's been windy. We've had a lot of crazy storms. Um, I know like I have a lot of, uh, different anxieties, uh, but I know some friends who really struggle with weather related anxiety, like storms and, and, and things like that. So if that is something that affects you, my heart is with you, um, because that is very challenging this time of year. Um, but wow, we've had a lot of storms rolling through and wind and hail, did y'all have hail where you are yesterday? Um, I was in a district and we were in a room with no windows <laughs> uh, for the whole day. So I didn't see. I heard some rain and some thunder coming down at some point. But um, but I didn't see any hail. I didn't see any rain. But my husband said that they had like, I don't know, the size um, hail by his office. And he's kind of over by O'Hare um, where he works. So I don't know. It's been interesting uh, to kind of see how the weather has been playing out. So uh, wherever you are joining uh, with us tonight, please uh, leave it in the comments. How has the weather been by you? Have you been impacted by any of the storms? Uh, hopefully you and your families and your students and their families are all safe and sound. Um, but I do have to say though, like April is here and I'm really happy. Like even though I know this kind of does bring more storms our way, we do have warmer temperatures. And today, earlier today, I was able to crack the windows in my house and I was so very excited <laughs> to do that just to get some fresh air. Like I just feel like having some nice fresh air in your home, there's like nothing better than it. Um, I will say though, like I struggle opening the windows <laughs> of my house. Like they're just really old and they stick really easy. So it's like a whole workout getting them open. So <laughs> that's something. But anyway, anyway, um, so tonight's theme, what I really wanted to chat with y'all about was goal setting um, in all of its forms. Um, but there's a few different ways that we can take this. But when you hear goal setting, like what comes to mind for you? Um, I think when we talk about goals, Sometimes, uh, like with our students, sometimes it like just brings about a whole batch of anxiety of like, oh, why do I have to do this? And I remember even having conversations with my own kids, like, you know, over their years of schooling um, about goal setting. 
And sometimes they would say like, well, there were three places that I had to write different goals and I ran out of things to say. So I just like filled in something that really wasn't important to me. So that is a conversation that has always stuck with me because like, you know, we want to encourage students to identify goals. We want to encourage ourselves to identify goals. Um, but sometimes like it can't be a prescriptive approach, right? Like maybe I don't have three goals for my behavior right now, <laughs> or maybe I don't have three goals for organization right now. Maybe I have like one for behavior, one for organization and one for balance. Or I don't know, whatever. Um, so we can kind of unpack that in a few different ways, but Tonight, what I wanted uh, to share with y'all, uh, and again, please leave your thoughts and ideas and your resources and tools in the comments so that we can all learn and grow with each other tonight. Um, but I wanted to talk about goal setting as a human being, like for us as human beings, goal setting as an educator, and then goal setting with students. So those are like the three lenses that I kind of wanted us to, to go down, but you know me, sometimes I go down tangents. <laughs> So stay with me. You might have to come in the comments and say, hey, Carly, refocus. <laughs> All right. Um, but so let's hop into the first layer, which is like, you know, goal setting as a human being, as a person. <laughs> uh, we wear a lot of, you know, different hats. We have a lot of different roles in our lives. But as a human being, um, if you feel comfortable, I, I'm curious to see and, and hear what your goals are that are not work related at all, uh, but just for yourself. Um, one goal that I have had for myself, just as a human being, um, is to invest in better sleep. Um, I started to read a few different articles, um, like in sites that I'm not usually on, like I usually spend a lot of time on like, you know, education related content websites, um, but like looking at ways to improve my sleep. Uh, and, you know, they always talk about, like, turn off your tech at a certain time. Like, I don't even know what it is. <laughs> I've read a lot of articles, but I can't remember. Like 90 minutes or maybe longer before you go to bed. So that way it trains your brain into, like, you know, getting into, like, a restful state. Um, so, no, that was one piece. Um and then like temperature in the room and blackout curtains and even like a mask you can wear over your eyes so that, you know, if your partner's coming in and out or of the room or whatever, or they leave early in the morning for work, um, you're not like, you know, completely woken up by the blinds opening, for example. Um, but something that has really made a good difference for me has been, um, oh gosh, now I'm going to, now I'm going to say it wrong. I think it's brown noise. You know, how, like they, they've talked about like white noise and like noise machines and sound machines. Um, white noise has always been something that people have used. Like there's things that you could put on your phone, but brown noise, that was something that was new to me. And I had never heard of that, but I started to use brown noise to fall asleep to. And I have to say, I really like, I appreciate it. It's, it's working. Um, so I've been trying to invest in better sleep. Another goal for myself as a human being was to limit the amount of caffeine, um, that I've had. I have had some cardiovascular issues like over the last few years. Um, and so I didn't realize how, much caffeine I was having in any given day. And so I have started to like the past few months, uh, started to just have my like one very large cup of coffee in the morning and then no caffeine for the remainder of the day. Um, and that's been really hard because like you get those caffeine headaches, like when you, when your body is so used to it and then you take it away. Um, so I have to say, it has really been helping me. I feel healthier. I have far less like heart palpitations throughout the day. My anxiety has been a little bit better, not completely, but it has helped my anxiety. Um, definitely like less jittery throughout the day. So that's been a good goal uh, that I've been able to stick with. Um, yeah, so that has been working out. And then my final goal was just like more movement, more movement in my day. Um, I was so used to being in, you know, a school district for so long and like I'm just bopping all over the place. Um, and then when I transitioned into this role at the Illinois Resource Center, I if I'm not in a school or a district, um, many times I am presenting behind a screen. I'm doing webinars and things like that. So I have 
had to be really intentional about incorporating more movement. So maybe that means walking my dogs or going to the gym. We joined like our park district gym and I've been able to get some movement in that way. Um, but I have to say that is a goal that I still really, really struggle with. Um, and at first I was like, all right, I'm going to go seven days a week. I'm going to just like go really hard at it. Um, and I know that for myself, like I go hard at something and then I start to fizzle out. So I've been trying to be like better about like tracking systems for like monitoring my goal. Um, but then I'm also like trying to play that balance too of like, Carly, if you need rest today, rest. Um, and it's interesting too, because other folks in my family have similar goals, like my a child who lives in my home that I'm not allowed to talk about. <laughs> um, but he is very passionate about his like regimen because he plays sports. Um, and so he's like, you know, you got to make sure that you're going every day because if you skip one day, then it's going to be easier for you to skip on the following day. So I'm trying to like take in that advice, but also give myself some grace and honor some elements of balance. Um, so that's been, that's still been hard for me to try to like figure out. So goals as a human being, um, I think that's something that has always been like, <laughs> I often don't invest as much time and energy into my like being a human being goals as I do for my like professional goals and my work related goals and things like that. So I think that's, you know, an area of growth for me and maybe for others. <laughs> we just pour so much of of ourselves into what we do that it's important to kind of take a step back, be a human being and focus on those goals. I don't know. So if you have uh, some like human being goals, like looking at yourself as a human being, not as an educator, not as a, a mom, an aunt, a caregiver, whatever, but like as a human being, what are some of your goals? I'd love to hear them. Or if you're catching the replay, feel free to share after the fact as well. Um, so goals as a human being, it's important. The next layer that I wanted to share a little bit about is goal setting as an educator. Um, and I think that many of us are starting to, you know, we're reaching levels of burnout. We're reaching maybe levels of demoralization. I know my colleague, Mandy Fralick, uh, she is the author of books like, oh gosh, I have her book here. The Educator's uh, Matchbook. I'm trying to find it on my shelf. Y'all know I always look over at my shelf here. I should just do like a shelf tour one day. Um, but Mandy Freilich, uh talks a lot about like educator burnout, educator demoralization and things like that. Um, so her, her uh, face always comes to my mind when I talk about this. But I think educators, when we're talking about like setting goals for ourselves as professionals, one of the like more popular goals right now is to, like trying to find a balance between like personal and professional life. And that's just so hard, I think, for many of us. Um, yeah. So balance or finding some elements of balance um, or turning off work at a certain hour, it's it's really challenging, but it is important. Um, so looking at professional goals, like we want to do, it doesn't have to be something huge and big. Maybe it's something just like a little small shift. Like I want to incorporate this one strategy and I want to try it out three times in the next month or I want to try it out once in the next two weeks and like looking at my unit plans and saying where might this fit or maybe this fits in the next unit a little bit better for me to dabble with um so it doesn't have to be something like you know you know something like I think we sometimes we get we overcomplicate things just because of the nature of our jobs like doesn't have to be a smart goal doesn't have to be like <laughs> All of these things. Um, but, you know, finding those things that are important to us, finding those things that can still light us up and still stretch us a little bit. Um, but also, like, finding the grace and finding the balance in those things. Um, so I'm curious if you have um, a goal for yourself as an educator or as a leader, especially now, like this time of year, I know many of us are either on spring break right now, or we're just coming back from spring break. This is a really good time, I think, for us to consider goals for the next stretch of the school year. Um, 
maybe it's the home stretch uh, for you and your school. So considering, you know, what are some things that are important for me to explore, to play with, to try out? Um, I always get such a jolt of energy this time of the school year because we have more sunshine and more daylight hours. The temperatures are warming up. I start feeling more optimistic. I start putting more fun things on my calendar, like socially and stuff like that. So I get more energized just naturally as a human being this time of year. So I feel like uh, this was always my time of year to like try something new in the classroom or try a new strategy or a resource or a tool or mix something up in terms of seating or like, like change up our space, um, things like that. So I'm curious if, if that is something that is true for you too. Um, do you have a goal that is related to that jolt of energy? Or maybe you are the opposite and you say, no, 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 Carly, this is the time of year where I am the most maxed out, the most fried. Um, and my goal right now is just like survival, <laughs> just like crawling to the finish line. Um, I want to honor that too, because again, my, how I process the school year is dependent on, you know, how I interact with the world around me and my, all my circumstances and things like that. So um, anyway, so if you have uh, some educator goals, some leadership goals uh, for you, we would love to hear them. Uh, you can definitely share those in the comments, or maybe this is something that you want to just kind of take and consider and journal uh, independently, like definitely invite you to do that as well. And then the last piece, the last layer was uh, goal setting with our students. So I shared the brief story of uh, my own kids. Who they said like, you know, sometimes we get a worksheet and it's like design three goals for behavior, or define three goals for organization. And they would just write like a throwaway goal because they, they were just trying to fill space. <laughs> they truly were. They were just trying to fill space. And they were like, this isn't really something that interests me or like it's not really something that I need to work on. I just didn't have any other ideas. Um, sometimes having students share their goals with each other, that can be a really empowering process because sometimes it'll just kind of help generate ideas. Like what are other kids thinking of that they need to work on? I know that sometimes when we can sit around the table and share our educator goals or even our human being goals, um, sometimes that kind of gives us you know, like, oh, I hadn't thought of that. I was at a meeting uh, recently where somebody was uh, talking about managing anxiety and they were talking about an app that they used. And I was like, oh, that's something that's new to me. I have not used that one or tried that one out. So that's definitely something that I want to explore. So I wrote it down so I can download it and try it out. Um, so anyway, that, that piece about sharing we want it to be optional. Uh, we want it to make sure like, you know, everybody in the space feels comfortable sharing or that, you know, students have the option to opt out of sharing because sometimes our goals are, are very personal to us. Um, but then like helping our students identify like what are the small steps that I'm going to take each day to get to that goal? Sometimes that's the trickiest part, like because when we want to reach a goal, we have to like develop certain habits, right? Of course, depending on the goal. So how are we going to build up and reinforce small habits until they become routines so that we can uh, have more success in reaching that goal? And then like, where are my, ch my check-in points? So if I have like seven weeks left of school, where are my check-in points for reaching or attaining my goal? How am I going to track my progress like as a student? Like this is a really cool opportunity for us to kind of guide students in that process. Um, and then I think it's also really cool when you can share your goals as a human being and as an educator. Um, I know that like, you know, many times like we ask kids to create goals or post goals, but they don't hear us doing it. Um, and it's so important for us to model that like we're always continuing to grow and stretch ourselves and reach for the next thing and try out new things and take risks with things. Right. So we really want to model that process with our students. Um, and so like when we do have those like maybe moments that we've identified as check in times, like say to your students, like this is the goal that I told you all about. This is something that I'm trying either as a human being or as an educator. Um, how, like, here's how I'm checking in with myself right now on this goal. Well, I can see that I've done this and this 
twice this week, but I really want to like the second time I really wasn't excited about it. So here are the things that I'm going to do to tweak it the next time I try it. And my next try date is going to be next Wednesday or whatever. I don't know. I'm just making stuff up now. Um, but like having that think aloud moment right in front of your kids about how you're tracking your goal and like how you're promoting like that self-talk in the process of like, gosh, I really did not hit my goal. <laughs> like, that's okay to say too, right? Like, I really didn't hit it this week. So next week, I want to really ramp up my efforts. Like having that real kind of talk, that real dialogue in front of kids is so important, no matter what age level we have, right? Like kids need to see that we are human beings, that we are stretching ourselves, that we are growing ourselves, that we are trying and sometimes not making it, right? Like that's a life skill. So um, yeah. Uh, I also had for a period of time, I had one group of students that said that they wanted to establish like a data wall based on a class goal. So the students identified a class goal. It was related to our math, um, like math facts. Uh, they wanted to talk about fluency, like, like, uh, like having correct, like accuracy in their fluency for math facts. And then they wanted to also talk about, so what was it? Oh gosh, accuracy and automaticity. So like how automatic they were able to just kind of like, you know, pop out their facts and go. Um, so that was a, like a student generated uh, goal. And so they said, we wanted to track our progress of how we're doing it. And so they kind of came up with a system that we would track just like data across the classroom. There were no like student numbers. There were no student names, anything like that. It was just like a tracking system. And they posted it every month. Like it was a cool graphing activity too. Um, I should see if I can find any of those resources because uh, it was really neat. The next group I had did not want to do that. They did not have an interest in it. So every group, you know, of course, is very, very different. But um, for that particular group, it really did motivate them. Um, so, yeah, it's just it was uh, something interesting. Uh, I wonder, though, if I were to do it in like even small groups. So if we had kids kind of share out what their goals were and if they had any similar goals and any related like content areas. Um, I wonder if they had like kind of, you know, like when you get into those like accountability groups, um, I wonder if they like if I could have set that up or maybe if you have tried something similar to that, let us know about it. If you have any tools, resources, uh, please feel free to share those in the comments. Um, I know I'm super curious. I would love to like kind of explore that a little bit more, but Goal setting does not have to be big. It does not have to be scary. It does not have to take up a whole lot of time and it doesn't have to fit in any formula. Um, so I, again, invite you to share any of your goal tip, uh, your goal setting tips and tricks and tools in the comments with us either tonight um, or as you kind of go on. I know like I'm always the person that like in the middle of the night, I'm like, oh, wait, I have this resource or this tool. So if you're like me, feel free to come back to this video and add it later on. Um, but I hope you are all doing well. Next week, I'm excited. Uh, I've got some friends joining me from the IRC. Um, this month, we are going to be talking about family engagement. We're going to be talking about overcoming co-teaching challenges. Uh, and then I believe that at the end of the at the end of the month, we're going to talk about um, how to support home languages as a monolingual teacher. Um, so lots on the horizon for this month. Um, and of course, stay tuned to all of our updates on the Illinois Resource Center, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and TikTok pages. Got a lot happening. A lot of really exciting things are on the horizon, but I can't share yet. So be sure you are staying tuned. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great rest of your week.